Well hello and welcome folks to the Gage Look. And here we are in a short, well I say a short video, we're going to look through almost all of the units added to the green skins in the Radius mod. The reason I'm doing this is we've got quite a popular campaign going on about it called the WA, so please check that out, I'll add the description in the description below. But I wanted to show you some of the new units because the green skins in particular have loads of units in Radius. In fact, I've only selected 19 units here. And that is not, in fact, all of them. So if you do want to find out more, please subscribe to the Radius mod. I don't make anything from it, no, nothing like that. It's just a bit of fun. And if you want to play the same campaign as me, of course. Now, of course, he didn't add Grimgore, but I just want to put in... Look, look how magnificent Grimgore is. Okay, so let's have a wee look through. Now, this is going to take a wee while, so this probably isn't going to be that short a video, so sorry. Right, let us do this. Is my microphone working? It is. And hello, my face is here. Hope you don't mind. Um, Orc boys, great weapons. Uh, I don't think we need to read the descriptions, just have a, a variant of the standard Orc boys. Um, with the green skins, there's been some liberties taken, but I would suggest that all these are within the realms of possibility. And then I, in fact, have been checking my army book. And I think you can almost make a play for all these units. There's sometimes some criticism. Uh, of the Radius mod being not particularly low friendly. Now, I'm a big fan of overhaul mods. I do play SFO as well as Radius and and as well as Vanilla quite a lot. And to be honest, there's some questions about lower friendly and even the Vanilla. So we'll get past that and we're not going to focus on that. Okay, Night, Go Night Goblin Spearman. Again, as you'd expect, shielded, anti-large, vanguard and poison attacks. These are actually very handy. Um, there is a few units missing from the Goblin selection here because they're only available in the Crooked Moon faction, which makes a lot of sense. Bit cool. Night Goblins are absolutely fantastic. I actually had some of these when I was much younger on the tabletop. Forest Goblin Swords. Okay, so these are kind of like a mid-level tier infantry. Pretty decent, you know. Shield Aid, Vanguard Deployment, Poison Attacks. Full Shield. Decent melee attack. What have we got here? Forest Goblins are a breed of goblins who live in the forest, divided into several tribes and hidden deep in forests. Forest Goblins are always eager to raid and pillage isolated farms, villages and sometimes even cities. So basically, folks, they're little bastards. And look at the little bastards. They're very, very cool. It's amazing what you can do with the asset set. Now, obviously, these modders can't add in any of their own t uh, textures or assets, I believe. I might be wrong, but I think that's right. So I think that's pretty cool what they've done here. Okay. Broken Tooth Armor Boys. These are kind of the equivalent of Forest Goblins. They're bigger and harder. They're armor piercing and they're armor and shielded. The Broken Tooth are an orc tribe situated to the east of Fire Mountain. The tribe is ruled by black orcs and it's the famous for their goblins' ex extensive training program. That's cool. Who is so lucky to survive the training, become a decent warrior. And I have read about these guys in some of the Black Library stuff. Broken Tooth. And of course they are a faction, I believe, in the standard vanilla campaign. But they're basically mid-level. Very good weapon strength, as you'd expect. Okay, leadership. Generally good. Iron Claw Orcs. These are just fairly low-level, anti-large armor-piercing units. Very handy, although often you don't fight too much large units because your main enemies tends to be the dwarfs. However, with the advent of the Tomb Kings, these are a little bit handier. They also look very cool. I'm intrigued to know where they got that spear from. They do look a bit rusty, don't they? But yeah, basically anti-large units. Iron Claw Orcs. Let's see what it says about them. The Iron Claw are an orc tribe situated between Blood Liver and the Howling River in the Badlands. They're most famous for the war boss. Oh, Gorbad. Gorbad Iron Claw. In fact, Gorbad Iron Claw. Let's have a wee look at him. I'm sure you're in here. You are. Okay, let's check him out. Gorbad. In many reckons, Gorbad was the mightiest orc warlord that ever lived atop his fearsome and explosively flatulent boar Narla. Yeah. There he is there, folks, if you can see him. Gorbad Iron Claw. Good looking son of a bitch. Right, let's move on. Okay, so we have Snakes in Savage Orc Boys. These are basically a shielded variant of Savage Orc Boys. These are quite high level Savage Orcs. Uh, I love playing as the Savage Orcs and they do lack just a wee bit of punch sometimes. And obviously they still have no armour. They are a wee bit better and of course they've got their physical resistance. And their Savage Orcs. And I like that. I'm, I'm not sure about the shields exactly maybe if they all had those shields but you know you can't have them all exactly the same or they'd look too uniform and that's not bloody sun boys some of my favorite units armor shielded again kind of similar to the forest goblins 
what do we say about there? The bloody sun boys are the one of the forefront of the war against the dwarves. Only the strongest and most cunning are allowed to join the bloody sun boys. I've heard of these guys before as well. Again, mid-level. You know, packs a punch. Uh, certainly we eat up any empire units. Obviously, great swords would annihilate them. Orc egg hunters. These are very interesting. These guys have melee attack fire damage, obviously. Their vanguard deployment, which is interesting, and their fire resistance. Orcs who take it upon themselves to journey to a wyvern's lair and steal the eggs from them. Many try to raise these as mounts, although few have the ability to dominate and tame them correctly, often ending up as dead. I must admit to not knowing about them, but that is an interesting piece of lore. I know Radius uses a, a, a lore expert to try and get some of these units right, so they're interesting. They have quite a lot of functionality, maybe against some of the vampire units. Um, they're obviously not too heavy hitters, but Jesus, they look cool, don't they? Okay. Big Stabber, Savage Orcs. Exactly what you expect. Anti-Large. Look very, very cool, Savage Orcs. They were missing them. Bone Clubber, Savage Orc Boys with great weapons. Again, another variant of Savage Orcs. Bone Clubber's tribes is known for the Tiger Pelts and Cloths. I think I'm aware of these guys. Basically, though, they're standard Savage Orcs. Um, with great weapons, which I like. Uh, black Orcs with shields. Exactly the same as Black Orcs, slightly less melee attack and so forth, but obviously with a shield. Look very, very cool. No reason why Black Orcs can't have shields. I know they're not exactly what you'd expect, but doesn't make any difference. War Boss Immortals. These are basically Black Orcs with a different name. They look a little bit better. They've got mixed weapons. They maybe got slightly better stats. They're just a variant on the Black Orcs. I'm not sure if there's potential. Oh, they have perfect vigor, though, which is very interesting. That must be to try and simulate. And I suppose when you think about the lore, like when they went to help it and they talked about the, the immortals almost standing up as long as a good old Grimgor himself after he spent so long slaughtering the millions upon millions of inhabitants, they must have close to perfect vigor, so that's cool. Gobnobs, love these guys. Very heavy, heavy, heavy gobbles. Uh, they look fantastic, by the way. Look at these guys, absolutely fantastic. So these are anti-large, armor, shield aid, charge defense, and poison attacks. Absolutely superb. Gobnobs, these gits are the right sneaky like. Absolutely amazing. Love them. Nobs dual wield. Now these are the ones I know less about. There's a few of these. Nobs great weapons, hard knobs, nobs dual wields. They're all sort of the variants of the same one. Let's see what it says about them. Bigger and harder. Oh. Bigger and harder, these lads mow down the little gits. I'm not too sure of these, but these are the absolute elite level infantry. Obviously, they pack a huge punch, but there's less of them. I suppose the idea of these are these are the veterans. I would say that they're probably just below the likes of Iron Breakers and things like that. And maybe some of the Knights of Mor in the Empire. But they are gorgeous looking bastards. We've got some anti-infantry, we've got some armor piercing, and we've got some melee expert. Interestingly, no anti-large. There's no super elite anti-large. Your best anti-large is probably your gobnobs. And although they're very good, they don't quite compare with the elite other ones, which is probably right. Forest Goblin Archers. I don't think these guys need too much explanation. Vanguards, Poison Attack. Uh, Forest Goblins are well known in the Warhammer world. Cheeky little bastards that can fire from behind you, basically. Look cool. I like the wee leather jackets. We've got Ruglan Boys. These are Orc Archers. Now, these are interesting. These gets the demeanest, shootiest lads here, and will fight for any git with enough teeth to give them. I don't know anything about these guys. I think the orcs did need better archers. Probably worthwhile noting, although they've got decent uh, armor, they're definitely not the best range units out there, which I think is fair because they shouldn't be. But they look cool. Decent infantry unit as well. Okay, bloody boar boys. These are just a slightly upgraded version of boar boys. There is a few more variants. They've got black boar orcs and so forth. And a few forest spider rider variants as well. The Bloody Sun Boys tribes is one among hundreds of greenscape tribes that populate the Badlands, led by a huge black orc. The tribe conquered its rivals. They're just slightly better boars. I like them. They look cool. The noises are amazing as well. Okay, so I think normally I do this and then kind of quit beforehand. I think we should actually fight this battle because I don't think it'll take too long. Guess what we have against us? Thousands and thousands of zombies. Okay. Attack. No messing around, please. 
And I don't think this will take too long somehow. In fact, I reckon then this side will be even more exciting. If you can just come round here. I'm not going to try too much in the way of strategy. Veering off a fair amount. I'll tell you what, let's get this charged first. Come on, bloody sun boys. <laughs> this isn't the laboratory either, I might add. Okay, let's have a look at these hard knobs. These are just going to be pummeled, aren't they? Little gob knobs are getting in there. There's no unit here that should struggle whatsoever against vampires. Vampires? or well, vampires too. Absolutely devastated this. Yeah. Although they haven't killed massive amounts in their initial charge. It'd be interesting to see who gets the most kills. Could be... Oh my god. One of you have died. Bloody savage orcs. A couple of my guys have died actually. Grimgar. Let's get this over with. And indeed, folk. Oh my goodness. What? Oh yeah. Wah. Okay, guys, I think we'll just leave it there. I think we, we know the outcome of this cheeky little battle. Um, I am very impressed with the green screen collection in Radius Mod, I must admit. Uh, there's more in this faction, I think, than some other factions. Let me know if you want me to go through some other factions as well. There is units added to them all, even in Kislev. And I will see you for the next one. And please remember, join the WAH.